Hello everybody, my name is Kendra. I have not sat down to do a video in quite some time and especially to sit down and show you all the things that I have been working on. Now, these last few months have kind of flown by, but I thought I, just before we get started, I'd let you know, we're going to be talking and I'm gonna be showing you um, the things that I've been making and it's gonna be kind of in the categories of like knitting and crocheting and spinning and then cross stitch. And so if you're interested in only one of those categories, feel free to skip ahead. Um, but that's just kind of the, the plan for how we're gonna do things today because I do expect this is gonna be quite a long video because I have a lot to show you. I'm not showing you any purchases or anything like that. Not that I've been doing much of that. Um, just what I have been working on, mostly finishes and a few things that are kind of in progress still. So I hope you enjoy that sort of thing. I would definitely recommend you grab whatever you're working on um, if you're gonna sit down and uh, yeah, take a look at what I've been doing. Before we get started, I just wanted to say welcome back and welcome to any new viewers. Um, I have been here on YouTube on and off for a couple years. I always kind of make a few videos and then get a little bit overwhelmed by the amount of time that it takes to put things together and then take a little break. And that's kind of been my cycle. So if you've stuck around, I really do appreciate it. Um, I'm also pretty multi-craftual, I think is a word I've heard assigned to it, in that I don't really stick to one craft. And I have thought that that doesn't necessarily bode well with a lot of people who are watching who maybe are really into knitting or really into cross stitch, really into sewing, uh, but I bounce around a lot and I've just decided to embrace it and show you all the variety of things that I'm doing. Um, and maybe it will give spark some idea in you of some of the things you wanna work on. Also, if you are new, um, I am a mom of three young kids and right now we are doing a variety of things, not just crafty things, meaning working in the garden, camping trips, we're playing outside, prepping for homeschool, doing a lot of different things. But there's just a lot of kind of downtime where it's hard to like go out and do things. But um, I have time hanging out with the kids where I can just work on little hand projects and I really appreciate that time. And I like to put that effort into something that to me feels really valuable and um, not just for the product, but also for the process of doing it. So let's jump in and I'll show you what I've made. There are a few things you may recognize that I had shown you in a previous video. The first one being this little sweater. Um, I did a couple videos on how I embroidered these little daisy stitches on it. But this is a toddler size, I think it's made about a size two, and it is out of a yarn that was provided by Knit Crate, and it's a cashmere blend. It's very, very soft, and I decided to make it lined. So it is, um, there's no wrong side to it. And I stitched these little daisy stitches and put on some little coconut buttons on it and it turned out very cute and sweet and um, it's warm because it has that extra layer, but it's still, yeah, it's really cute. Also, I'm gonna do my best to link um, any patterns and information that I'm forgetting. I kind of just gathered as much as I could and I'm sitting down to give it to you, but I don't have super comprehensive notes, so I'm going to do my best either on the screen or in the description bar. So if you're looking for information, please check there. I'm totally blanking on what pattern I used for this, but I know I did heavily modify it to add that lining in there. My next project was another one that I had in progress back in March, I think was when I did my last sit down sort of video with you guys, and that is the Linger Here sweater, and it is by Telly Bean Knits. You can see there's this chunky cabling throughout the sweater, and it has a drop shoulder with the twisted rib on the top. This sweater was knit out of Knit Pick Stroll, and I did the fingering weight and then held it double, and I just barely had enough out of 10 balls of it. Knit Pick Stroll does come in 50 gram balls, um, and yeah, I did, didn't use any extras, but the sleeves are just barely long enough, um, but I usually kind of push them up so they're, they feel three quarter length, although they are more like bracelet length when pulled down. But that is this one. I'm really happy with this. It's such a smooth, plump feeling fabric. And I haven't been wearing it much through the summer, but I know I will wear it a lot this fall. It's different. It's different from a lot of the other sweaters that I have made, and I really appreciate that about it. Um, and yeah, I've already worn it a few times. It is medium thickness because it is held double. It's kind of like a DK weight, um, but it's not super heavy because it is quite a loose gauge. So after that, I did knit another sweater, 
and finished it up. This one is the Stone Crop Cardi. Now this is a pattern by Andrea Mowry and it is a steeped sweater, which means it's knit in the round and then you cut it up the middle. This is my first time doing a steek on a adult size garment. I have done it on a child size in the past, um, but this is the sweater and how it ended up. So the yarn I use for this is mostly Holstgar and that's this light pinkish purpley color. It's the sweet pea color, which I had a cone of. And then the contrasting colors here, I have just some undyed knit picks. Stroll, I think it was, as um, the cream and this light blue, I think it was called Robin's Egg or Robin's Promise, which was another one that came out of the Knit Crate subscription box. And all in all, this is my sweater. I also use these mother of pearl buttons, which I think look really nice, but they're a little heavy on it. So I'm currently debating whether I should add a ribbon to the back, leave it, I don't know. But that's how it is right now. This is a shorter sweater. It comes like right to the top of my hip bone rather than a lot of my other sweaters are quite a bit longer than that. It, the only other modification I made was in the baubles. You can see there, there's this textured section every so many rows. And I did that on the yoke and then just decided to only just purl um, in the middle of that textured section throughout the rest of the sweater. I just wasn't loving the baubles. I didn't love making them and I didn't love the look of it. I just thought maybe I don't need more lumpiness. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's fine and a lot of people like I think enjoy it and it's all good, but I just decided to only do them on the yoke and then I think it looks great with the pearl as well. This is a sweater I feel really proud of because it is an all over color work sweater, which is one of those things I've really wanted to do for a while. I don't know if you're anything like me, but I like to feel challenged in the things that I'm doing. And I felt that way before when I knit that like all over cabled jackety sweater. And then with this one with the color work was just something that always felt like it would be really difficult. And it wasn't, um, this is the inside. And yeah, it wasn't hard. I mean, I've done color work before, but it just felt like a whole different sort of thing to have an all over color work sweater. I haven't worn this a ton, even though it is quite thin, it is fingering weight, um, but again, it has been really hot here. So come fall, I know this one will get pulled out a lot too. Okay, so the next garment feels a little more weird to show and that's because I knit the Ripple Bralette by Jessie Mae Designs. I used, again, this is another skein of the Knit Crate, uh, which is a monthly subscription box and they have been sending it to me for quite some time, which I really appreciate. And then I have a discount code, which I'll put down below for 20% off if any of you are interested in that. Um, it is an affiliate link. Um, but I have used their yarns in so many different projects, whether it's combining it with other items, sorry, wrong thing, <laughs> combining it with other things like in the stone crop or just for baby knits, for things on their own. Anyways, this was another one from probably like a year ago that I was just waiting for the perfect project and this is what it is. Now, I have seen other people like on Instagram or on YouTube here making these little like bralettes and I've wondered why would you do that? And I don't know, it just all of a sudden I thought I'd like to do that and so I did. And for me, the reasoning was be the way I would see myself wearing it and the way I have worn it is just, I like to wear oversized like button up shirts and I kind of thought it would be like a nice underlayer. Now I do wish it was like a full length cami more so and she does have another pattern that is I forget what it's called but basically that's the idea where it goes all the way down and I'd like to knit this again and do that um, this just takes like 100 grams of yarn for my size even it's very simple and loose fitting it's just lots of ribs so it fits a variety I don't know, it fits well, but I do wish it was longer. So I am do plan at some point to knit another one that's more of just like a full length tank top. It was just a different sort of project. It was fun to make and I would like to make another one. So I also knit the Cullum sweater by Quince & Co. And Isabel Kramer, I think is the designer who designed it for the company Quince & Co. And I used that Holstgarn cotton, which is coast in the marsh color. And this is the top I ended up with. I've worn it and it needs to be blocked again. I can feel that it's uh, kind of rolling at the edges. Um, and I found that the neckline was rolling. So I did add, I, you're supposed to just leave it, but I picked it up and added some ribbing to help it lay flat. But this is the top that is finished. And yeah, it's simple, but it's really nice. I enjoyed this pattern. And honestly, I'm not sure why I haven't worn it more, but I do like it. And it's very thin and lightweight. 
and will be great for these hot days. But this is another finished item. You know, I do have a little bit of grief with how big these armholes are though. I might just sew them up a bit and see if that helps. I don't know, I feel like I love the look of it. I like the progress of it, but the fit wasn't 100%. Um, nothing that wouldn't be solved by the fact that, I mean, I'm always gonna be wearing a little like tank top underneath it. Um, but yeah, I think I just have a few things I'd change for a future one. Now my very last garment was a very recent finish and this one was another one for my youngest who is one and this was actually a test knit for a designer knit moxie and you can follow her on instagram this pattern has not been released yet but she's fine with sharing images and video of it um, but you can go check it out this is called the cassis romper it is a one piece with a lot of different options I knit the size two, although the pattern does go up from newborn until size three, and it's reversible. So it has this section here that is the twisted rib, and it slips on. You can choose to, this version just comes up over the shoulders, uh, but there is an option to do um, a button flap at the bottom here. And then there's also options for more of a bodysuit bottom or a boy short bottom is what she calls it. This is the boy short bottom and I didn't do a fastener because it's just really not that hard to just slip it up from the bottom up. And then the back has this honeycomb pattern all over it, which I really, really love. And I quite like it when she has this front ways, so the honeycomb pattern at the front, and then this crossover section at the back. Such a cute little pattern. I'd definitely go check it out if you have little ones who you are knitting for. And I have, I knit this out of Premier Cotton Fair in the colorway Succulent, and it took one and a half skeins of that yarn. That's just a commonly found cotton blend yarn that can be found at Michael's. This is what I have left of my second skein, and it is a sport weight. So yeah, Knit Moxie if you wanna go check it out. I believe she said she's planning on releasing it at the end of August. So I've also knit two pairs of socks in the past few months, and I only pulled out one of each, but I have completed both pairs, and I put them on blockers to show you, but they are not blocked. They weren't when I put them on there, so they're a little wrinkled because I do machine wash my socks. Um, but both of these are commercially dyed yarns, so this first sock here is just knit out of Patton's Croy. It's one of their main colorways, and I use a contrast for the heel and the toe just to give me a longer foot on it. And that's because Patton's Croy does come in 50 gram balls, so I just bought 150 gram for the pair, and then using the contrast gave me a decent size sock. So I have this one here, and I think I did a simple rib on the toe, which I really like just because it does help it to fit better, it loses some of the slouchiness that can happen, um, and is very simple to do. So I have this pair, and the other one I did was using the Estelle yarns, which comes, they're called Sock Twins, where you get 250 gram cakes, they're already wound up like that, and this is one of those. I really like the color shifting in this, but I didn't love using the yarn, it was kind of splitty on me, and when I first started in the black, I had issues where like the thread was all tangled up. It was like one ply of it was tangly. <sighs> Anyways, not something I'd really seek out to use again, but I like the effect, I like the look, um, and made just a pretty simple pair of socks. Now since this was only a, this was 100 grams of yarn, I do have quite a bit left because it didn't take a whole lot, uh, but my daughter was already asking for a pair, so I thought I would make them the size I like, and then I will use the rest to make a kid size pair. So during this time, I also made a blanket, a small one, um, using this red heart, I'm not sure how to say that, I know it's a common word these days, but it's a fur yarn. I believe this color is rose or rose pink, dusty pink it's called. It is, yeah, one of these, these sorts of yarns, which I generally do not gravitate toward, but I was making it for a bridal shower gift for somebody who loves soft, fluffy pink stuff. So it seemed like the right choice. And I bought six balls and I think I used five of them. I would have put the other one in, but I was in a time crunch because I was originally gonna make it for the wedding and then they had a last minute bridal shower, which again, because of all the um, quarantine stuff, we had kind of like a drive-through sort of thing. It was all good but it did push up my deadline a little bit. But I just did basically a large garter stitch blanket and then attached an edging at the end. And I was really happy with it. It was really soft. 
I did not like knitting it <laughs> because this yarn's kind of a pain. Um, yeah, it kind of hurt my hands having to use really big needles and everything, um, but it was okay. I like the end result. It was worth it, but definitely going to take a break before I try to come up with something to do with my last ball here. Also kind of interesting is that uh, the recipient thought it looked a lot like those like barefoot dreams blankets, which I hadn't really been too familiar with, but looking it up online, they do look really similar and uh, those blankets are super expensive. And so maybe a good dupe if you are looking for a gift yourself. There are quite a few colors of this yarn and yeah, when it's all garter stitch, it, it just feels pretty solid and fluffy and cozy and yeah, really nice. All right, so next up, I'm gonna show you this little, um, art piece, I guess, that I made using a variety of crochet and knitting. I didn't put it in a frame or anything yet, and I've made some videos that I've posted both on Instagram and on TikTok. I've been making some TikTok videos. I don't know if any of you are on there, but I am finding it much more feasible to put together like a 10 second video instead of like a 30 minute video like I might on YouTube. And so if any of you want to check that out, it's just Kendra Makes on there too. Uh, but this one here is what I made using a variety of different yarns and textures. I have some fluffy clouds and anyways, I was just kind of experimenting with it and seeing what I could come up with. And yeah, it was a really fun little project. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it. I don't wanna put it behind glass because I think it'll lose a lot of the texture, like all of it. Yeah, there's a lot of it, so, but there's flowers are all fluffy. And anyways, just a fun project. But that's not the only wall hanging artsy sort of thing. I have a few others. Next up being this one here. This is a crochet. Um, I made this out of hand spun. I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see here. This is some um, hand spun. It's some superwash merino that I dyed and then spun up. And it was just, I love the colors. This is like right up my alley. And I thought, I want to look at this every day. So I used part of the pattern. I think it's called Dream Catcher um, by Red Heart. I don't know if that's culturally appropriate, but that was a pattern and it is quite a large circle crochet piece and I just used the center of it. There's lots online um, of different circular things you could use and I really like the full piece but it was going to be the size of a hula hoop which was a little larger than I wanted and so this is just a floral hoop um, that I picked up at the craft store and yeah I really like the effect of it. I like being able to see all these colors and the shift even though the merino is so soft and like nobody's touching it up there. Um, to me, seeing the color is the most important part for me. Now, speaking of that yarn, I had a little bit left and I thought I'd make a little baby hat. This is not for anyone in particular. It was just using up the last of that yarn. It looks a lot brighter on there with my light, but this is the hat. I haven't even blocked it yet, so it will, <laughs> those stitches will lay a little flatter. With hand spun, I always notice that a lot more, but I'm probably gonna pop a little pom-pom hoops -pom, on there once I'm done. And yeah, I think it'll be a cute little gift at some point, but I have that one there. I've also crocheted a couple animals over the past few months. If you've watched me in the past, you may remember I was making some crochet toys, um, mostly out of a book, uh, which I will put up here because the name is failing me right now. Um, but I have now knit like seven of the patterns out of there and I just love them all. So I have two new additions. I let each of my older kids pick one out and then we kind of look through our yarn, my yarn and to see what they wanted. The first one being this little unicorn. Now in the book, uh, the unicorn is called Robin Unicorn, uh, but we made a few changes. I used, uh, let's see, it was Lion Brand Hand Dyed Heaven, I believe they called it, which was 100% nylon. And I was a little concerned on how it would hold up and you can see it is, well maybe you can't see, there's some fluffiness, some pilling, um, but this unicorn has gotten a lot of love over the past few months. It's come camping with us. It's been snuggled pretty much every night. And there's two different colors and these are both that same lime brand, um, the blue and then the pink. But this, these darker pinks are a different yarn. And uh, yeah, here she is. There was a request 
for a little balloon cutie mark so I thought I would add that on um, and she actually just had a bath in the washing machine and her neck's a little floppy I need to get out like a crochet hook and try to um, push it down in there to make it better because it was not so floppy uh, before her bath but uh, we'll get there it's all good she's still she didn't have time to wait to be fixed she had to go be snuggled first so that is who she is. <laughs> I don't know. We just call her unicorn. Uh, but the second one here is the dragon. In the book, this pattern is called Gertrude Gr Dragon. Um, but yeah, let's see if that'll work. This is what we ended up with for, well, we don't call it Gertrude, for the dragon. Uh, just using some fairly plain yarns that were in, of acrylic that were in my collection. There's a lot of little spikes on this dragon. That was definitely the most time consuming part, but it was a lot of fun. My son really liked this pattern and had been wanting one of these. So this is the dragon. They are a pretty good size, um, but they're still very huggable, squishy. I love these patterns. I would knit them all, I think. Maybe I eventually will get there. After I was done with these, the kids were asking me to make more, but I kind of said I needed a little break from them before. Not to mention, they have a lot of stuffed animals. Not that they need more, but they are a fun project, something fun. I like that they can pick out the yarns and kind of help with the ideas behind them, and then they do seem to get a lot of love still. So these are two more finishes that I did earlier in the summer. I've got, <laughs> I've got one more wall hanging that is kind of, uh, it's macrame more than anything. It was my first attempt and I had a lot of plans that didn't quite go right um, but I don't really I've never done macrame before but I just used a dowel and hooked all these pieces I dyed it oh I got a tangle since bringing it in from where it was on the wall and I decided to put in all these how will you be able to see there's knots throughout that kind of come down into a diamond shape with this larger knot down there oh more tangles let's see <laughs> All right, so this is the finished piece. Um, it was an experiment. I learned a lot. Didn't turn out quite as planned, but that's okay. I, uh, I'd make one again, but I might make some changes using a bit of what I've learned. Oh, there we go. Using a bit of what I've learned from it, which I think is fair. Oh, that's too far now. Okay, anyways, you can see there's some knotting in there. I was just experimenting. I didn't follow a pattern or anything, um, but this is what I came up with. And yeah, it was a fun, fun way to try something new. Okay, I'm gonna go into knitting whips and then head on to spinning from there. So first up is another kid size sweater. Can you tell what I like making these days? I really enjoy making stuff for the kids. They're not just, you know, kind of quicker projects, but getting them involved and I like that they actually seem to appreciate and use the things that I've been making. So I'm enjoying it while it lasts because I'm sure it won't forever. But this is just another flax sweater. I've made this pattern basically a gazillion times. This is a flex yarn by Loops and Thread. Um, it comes in quite a large ball. I think it goes for, well, I just actually looked it up because someone on TikTok was asking me, I think it was for $5.99 for this big ball that was more than enough then to make this sweater. Um, I am just have the rest of this first sleeve and all the second sleeve left. But you can see there's all these different multicolored little flex in the yarn. It's very simple because you can knit a simple pattern like the flax and yet it's still kind of interesting because it has all those flex on it. Mm -hmm. I did include the garter panel on the sleeve and I also did a purl stitch down the side seam just to change up the look a little. I'm not sure how well you will have to see but it does run through the underarm. Otherwise, I generally did follow the pattern as it was written. Um, and I think I'm making, I think there's a size eight or six to eight and then adding a little length. I'm not even sure anymore, but <laughs> this is where we're at. It's almost done. I started this quite a, maybe a month and a half ago. It easily could have been done, but it's kind of too hot to wear it right now. And it's been kind of hot to not really want to work on knitting, at least for me. So I put it away for a bit. And this is an acrylic blend. I don't know if I mentioned that, but it's acrylic and then the um, little flex are polyester. And there's one strand of the ply, one ply, 
one strand of ply that runs throughout that has all the multicolor flex. And I will give a warning that it is pretty splitty as you're knitting, knitting with it. It's easy to only pick up one ply or one part of the yarn um, rather than the full thread. So if that's something you're sensitive to, you might not like it, but it's very soft. I can just, even though it is acrylic, it's, yeah, it has a lot of smooth, silky softness to it. Um, so that might be something that you'd, I don't know, like, dislike, I don't know. <laughs> That's what it is. This one is going to be done probably before too long. And yeah, that is the larger project that's on my needles right now. And then the other one is just using up some hand spun. I dyed this using initially with avocado and then I layered on some of the bluish greenish color. And this is what the yarn looks like. I guess getting into hand spun here. And then I just started a pretty basic hat with it. I really like seeing how the hand spun comes to be. This was interesting because the avocado was so brown and then I added on these blue splotches and it looks so like earthy, greenish, brownish, beige-ish. <laughs> so I want to see how it looks knitted up. A very basic hat. I think I used the numbers from the Barley Hat by Tin Can Knits, which is a free pattern. I'm not sure if I'm going to do the patterning, like the knit and the garter sections or not, but that is where I'm at for now. And it's just barely got the rubbing started. So not much of a start on that, but just something that'll be easy to pick up. So moving on to spinning. Now you've already seen two skeins of finished hand spun, which is that beige and then also the one I was using for the hat and for the wall hanging. Uh, but I did give uh, some art yarn a little try. Um, I watched a, cra a class on Blueprint Craftsy which I think has now generally closed, but I did watch a little class and try to do some little art yarn. It is, <laughs> I don't know, it's an attempt, let's call it that. I don't have too much to say about it. I was just trying to follow the instructor who was giving information on how to do these little like beehive sections and coils and thick and thin. And you know, I usually, when I spin, I'm not trying to be thick and thin, like sometimes it happens, but I do try to be a little more consistent. So it was definitely a challenge to, um, to embrace the variation and really like try to make variation. And sometimes that's hard to do after you've been spinning otherwise for a while, at least for me. Um, I, that was my only art yarn attempt at this point. But I have spun up two other skeins. This one here is out of some Peruvian Highland wool that I dyed quite a long time ago. And it was just kind of sitting. I wasn't thrilled with the dye, mostly because I felt like it kind of condensed the fibers. I didn't quite felt it, but it pulled them together a lot. And so I was kind of put it off for a while. But once I got into the spinning of it, it was fine. It wasn't felted. It was just condensed, I would say. Um, but yeah, there's this one here, shades of blue. It really goes, I've got a few other skeins that are very similar and I had plans to put them all together and make something like maybe a, another little like crop sweater that could go over a dress or something. Um, but I'm second guessing that now, so I'm not sure. But that's one. And then my second one here, and this is made out of some superwash BFL. It's looking pretty bright here. This is some more that I've dyed. And I had some, I think there's still a couple skeins of this. No, not skeins, a couple um, braids of this in my Etsy shop if you're interested. I have not talked about Etsy at all yet on this video, but thank you to everybody who has checked out or supported my little shop. I opened it just in March, um, selling some hand dyed self-striping yarn and fiber, and then I've added some progress keepers. And um, yeah, just thank you so much for the support. Kind of between, that and then actually making stuff that feels like that's taken up all of my time um but i'm really appreciative of it and yeah i really thank you for that so i have been dying a lot for my shop dying different self-striping colorways i'm not going to show them today even though i would like to um, but just because i have so much other stuff to talk about but if you want to check it out, it's just Kendra Make Shop on Etsy. All right, so we're getting into the cross stitch section of this video. You know, I have cross stitched on and off since I was a kid, and last summer I got really into cross stitch again for the first time in quite a few years, and then. You know, I continued it through the winter, but I got really back into it again this summer. I'm not sure if it's just 
that you know knitting is a little different in the summer than when it's cool and cold and the like warmth and fibers and everything feels a lot more comforting um, or if it's just like I've got a lot of sweaters now and I love knitting sweaters but I feel like it's getting to the point where I need a better storage option or something not to mention it's starting to feel maybe like it's gonna be wasteful if I keep <laughs> making them I've got a pretty good collection so anyways I've been kind of delving deeper into cross stitch lately so I hope you enjoy seeing that thought I'd start with a fully finished object meaning this was finished in my last video but I did buy a frame for it and this is just a leaflet out of a magazine um, and yeah it says behold children are a gift from the Lord from Psalm 127 5 it's a woman holding a child yeah it's gonna be hard to see but I did just pick up this wood frame and pop it in there and I think it looks nice um, I have it hanging up right over our dining room area where we do our homeschool and everything else and it just feels like a nice reminder um, but I think it works pretty well in that frame and to be honest this frame came as a two pack and the other one was one that I gifted when I completed quite a large cross stitch and I thought I'd tell you about that even though it not in my possession anymore and I'll insert some pictures but that one is the love of two hearts by long Dong sampler I cross stitched that on a picture of this plus the bloom on 28 count and I decided to do it one over one which may have been a bit of a mistake because some of it is pretty itty bitty like hard to see itty bitty um, but I like doing it I like the look of it um, but it is quite small compared to what it would have been um, and I included a few areas of personalization where I included some initials and things like that because it was a gift for a 40th anniversary so I put in the number 40 and then I put in like my siblings initials and things like that kind of hidden throughout the piece I don't think you'd notice it at first glance but there are yeah just some little letters and numbers hidden in there to signify different things so that was a fun one and it did take a while and that was another one where I had ordered it from 123 stitch the pattern and the fabric and it took well over a month to come this was back in January and so I was kind of on a time crunch to get it done by the anniversary so yeah but it was still fine I had it done well in time um, but there was some a few times where I realized ah, I've got so much to do and not a lot of time to do it now since then I have done a few others as well this first one is just an Etsy piece it was a pattern stitching land is where the designer name on Etsy and it's just a little flower bouquet it does look quite different from the picture because it was all yellow flowers that I converted to be kind of pinkish there's so many different flower designs that I'm not sure why I picked one I had to convert all the colors but this is the one I chose it fits really nicely in a 12 inch hoop which is what I stitched it in and so that is going to be how I finish it um, it just fits perfectly in there I just washed it and ironed it so I thought I'd show it to you flat before I get to finishing it I just ironed it today like it's finished last night and I decided to choose these colors which aren't my usual just because I do plan to put it in my youngest room and her room is kind of like a kind of like sagey green color so I think that it will let's see I think it will work out pretty well um, to have these colors in there and really it's just because her room has one other piece on the wall and that is her birth announcement sampler cross stitch piece but there's like no other decoration so I thought I'd give her some flowers for the room as well so this one is completed I knit this on the scrap that was left over from this piece which I initially thought was 28 count but I think it's actually 25 count Joblin and so this was the second the other half of the piece I got this fabric from magic hour cross stitch on Etsy they had really reasonable prices and cheap shipping it's a Canadian shop but they do ship to the States I think they're out of Niagara Falls area um, and they gave me quite a lar bit larger piece than what was advertised it was just like a scrap piece but I expected it just to be enough for this one but there was quite a quite a good chunk left to go for this one here and then I just used DMC on it as well. Another little kit that I was given by my mother-in-law, it was marked 25 cents. It is definitely an older design. It says busy hands, happy hearts. It's just an old dimensions kit. Um, and it comes with um, some finishing stuff with this bow and fabric. I'm not gonna finish it like this. Um, and I did change a few of the colors, but I thought, oh, that's cute. I will stitch that. And so I did. 
I did keep quite a few of the colors. It does look a little more like primary that I was maybe gonna hoping for. I think it still works though. Um, it has this little scissor charm on there and an old fashioned sewing machine. And yeah, it's cute. I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do. I like these little crafty type pieces. I think I can put them in my little sewing area, crafting area and where I have my computer set up and things. So I like doing things like that. Um, and I don't know, I could make it into like a little pillow or something or find a little baby size frame. I'm not too sure, but it was just a quick little stitch and I think it's pretty cute. Now I am currently working on two different cross stitch pieces. So I'm gonna show you one first and then the second one is going to be a gift. And so I'm gonna give a well warning that if you are my mom watching this, after this one, it's time to look away. And this is the last few things I'm gonna show. Uh, but this kit is one that she actually gave me a few years ago called Three Bird Watchers. It's the kitty watching these birds. Um, it's an older kit, it's been around for a long time. There's lots of examples online of people who have stitched it. And I started this and I made some mistakes and I ripped it all out and started it again last year, about a year ago. Um, so I've been just working on it here and there. You know, I've always been pretty monogamous, like working on one project at a time, generally, like for knitting and things, one big project. Uh, but with this one, I've really seen the value in working on it and then putting it away. And then when I pick it up again, I'm really excited about it. Whereas when I just have to like push through, sometimes it takes away some of the fun of it because it feels more like a chore <laughs> instead of just really enjoying it. So that's what I've done with this one is work on it for a few days and then put it away and pull it out again. And this is where we're at. I have done a bit of a crop. Now in the original pattern, it does call for quite a bit of like green tree and stuff on the sides here. And honestly, it felt kind of like a lot of stitching that didn't add to it at all. So I decided to just crop the house down a little bit and I think it looks really nice. A lot of what I have left at this point is just snow and then siding on the house down in here. Uh, but really not too much, I think, you know, Maybe like a week more of work on it could be done, maybe a few days, but it seems like there's a lot of back stitching too in this kit when it comes to these curtains. There's a lot of back stitching in there. And anyways, that stuff always takes a while. So it is nearing the finish line, but not quite yet. I also kind of have a plan in my head that has started to come to be. I have some projects I want to start, but I've had no cross stitch prep fabric. So I've ordered some from Traditional Stitches, which is a Canadian needle workshop. And um, one of them is a big project called Respon Responsible Woman, which is a chart that has been made from the artwork by James Christensen and made by Heaven and Earth Designs. I'm really excited. I bought this chart probably like a year ago when it was on a really good sale but it calls for like 90 colors and I just thought, oh, how am I going to, and, you know, just put together the time and money to get all the colors and the fabric and everything else. So I've decided I'm going to get it all ready to start next month for my 30th birthday. It seems like a fitting time. I just bought all the flosses. This is my big collection. This actually isn't quite all of them. The store didn't have a few and then I had some already. So I need to get this all prepped. I'm gonna put it on some like floss cards. And then I ended up buying the, fa the version of the chart that has no background. And I debated a long time over what fabric to use, but I decided to buy just a white one and try to dye it. Now, I have never dyed cross stitch fabric before, but I have dyed a lot of other things. Um, a lot of different types of like cottons and baby wearing wraps and, you know, just like a lot of dyeing. So I thought I will give it a try. I have some fabric coming in for that. So that is my exciting big project. But with that, I just thought, let me see if I can finish up all my other projects. So this one, the Busy Hands one, I just finished this weekend and I'm hoping to get that Three Bird Watchers finished as well. But that's best laid plans. Who knows, I've got some other Christmas ornaments and things I want to work on. So speaking of, this is my last item to show you. So again, if you are my parents, then goodbye. I know they do like to watch my videos, um, but this one is a gift and I wanted to still be able to share it with you. Um, it's not quite done yet, but I am making an ornament from Book Brooks Books. She has a lot of really interesting ones on Etsy. I just have a black and white copy, it won't show too well. 
Um, but I made it on some perforated paper and it is called The Spirit of Quilting. So it's all pieced together and all I'm missing is I ordered some beads, some Mill Hill beads, and they are way late on arriving, but that's the only thing I have left. But basically there is this woman here and her hands are out and she'll, you'll attach it with a string and on the string you put in the quilting basket and then there's wings behind and the sewing needle or the sewing pin cushion and there's also scissors that are made entirely out of the beaded stitches. Um, but yeah, the spirit of quilting and there's a whole series and I really love them but this one I thought was, I just really enjoy seeing her face come together and all the colors. I really like it. So once those beads are in, that should be pretty quick to finish up as well. Um, but yeah, that is all I have to share with you today. Thank you so much if you've gotten to this point for sticking it out. Um, yeah, let me know. What have you been working on? What are you working on while you're watching this? I hope you pulled up something to do instead of just listening to me talk for so long. But I need to go, so I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.